Hey everyone, the second part of the 57th episode of Skibidi Toilets is finally out. There was a lot of interesting stuff happened in it, so let's talk about all of it. Why was G-Man Toilet afraid to shoot the cameraman Titan? Where did the cured Titan speakerman fly off to? How did TV Woman manage to destroy the parasite? And why doesn't she pay attention to the simp cameraman? Also, I'll show you all the secrets and Easter eggs. Talk about all the moments you might not have noticed. Watch till the end. I promise it'll be interesting. Let's go. The episode continues from the moment Titan Speakerman destroyed Plunger Man. And I was sure it couldn't end that easily for this character. But he was just destroyed and didn't do anything useful in the battle. Except that he distracted Titan Speakerman while Titan Cameraman was fighting G Toilet. But Speakerman stood around loading his guns for a long time even without him. He didn't hurry to help his partner. Next, we see Titan Cameraman destroying the G-Toilet. First off, the hammer in part one was without a turbine, but now we see that the turbine has appeared and is working perfectly. I don't think this is an ability of the hammer, just an editing feature. If the hammer is not in use, Dafuk just doesn't detail it. Secondly, after the explosion, I thought G-Man's jetpack was destroyed, but it wasn't. Only his cannons are destroyed. There are only four of them left. Titan opens up his core to launch a strong attack, but G-Man immediately shoots at the weak spot. Once again, we see how strong Titan has become, as he doesn't care about the laser cannons aimed at his core. He hits G-Man with a hammer so hard that the hammer explodes, or rather the fuel in its turbine. But here's where we see G-Man hiding his head in time, and the hammer hits a toilet. Despite being so badly damaged, he turns out to be alive. We see parts falling off of him as he flies. His face looks burned and wounded. G-Toilet wants to attack Titan in the back and prevent him from destroying the parasite out of last resort. Surprising me, the cameramen on the roof turned out to be very brave. They attacked the huge toilet with hypno cannons. Yeah, it didn't work on G-Man, but he flew away. Why do you think he did it? Maybe he was scared of the Titan cameraman? Actually, it's all thanks to the camerawoman. She teleported up to the roof and fired a lot of darts at G-Man. As we remember, her darts have a paralyzing effect. Normal Skibidi would be immobilized by them, but G-Toilet is too huge, so such a dose didn't destroy him, but paralyzed him badly. His face began to distort in all directions, and he could no longer control his laser cannons. But back to the Titan Cameraman. He went into battle plane mode and flew towards Speaker Man at a huge speed. But it's very strange to me that the whole time G-Man Toilet was fighting the Cameraman Titan, the Speakerman just stood there and didn't go to help. I'm pretty sure that Skibidi scientist who controls the parasites was purposely waiting for G-Man Toilet to be destroyed. Notice how Cameraman Titan is bigger and stronger than Speaker Man. He throws him around like a child. Next, the references to episode 47 continue. Here's this Toilet Strider sneaking up on Titan from behind. Honestly, when I saw him in episode 47, I thought he had four laser cannons, but they turned out to be blades. I thought for a second that Titan would be destroyed. But he surprises us again with his power. Titan stands there with four blades in his chest like nothing happened. He didn't pull them out until the end of the episode like he doesn't even care. He lost his hammer and his cannon. I think the blades will be his new weapon. It's going to be very epic. Titan Cameraman destroys Skibidi Strider in a new way. At this point, we can get a good look at the emblem on his fin. Before, there was just a white circle there, but we should memorize it. Perhaps we'll see similar signs in new episodes. By the way, the cannons that Titan epically lowered at the beginning of Part 1 only fired once right here in this moment. I was also worried for a second that the Parasite would control the cameraman, but he immediately grabbed him and crushed in his hand. This is an obvious reference to Titan's first appearances, when he destroyed Skibidi spiders by clutching them in his fist. Again, notice how long it took Titan Speakerman to not fire his guns while cameraman dealt with the other Skibidi. It was like he was standing there like, Okay, I'll wait until you're done and then you and I will continue. And after that shot, he was standing again with his guns up and thinking. TV Woman took advantage of this moment and teleported over his head and jumped right up to the parasite. Now notice that when Plungerman was trying to disarm Titan, we just heard a sound. Now his head starts shaking and making weird noises. It's all because TV Woman used hypnosis. 
I don't know if she set the parasite on fire or just hypnotized him like normal TV men, but he was clearly very sick. And now I realize that's how Plungerman was supposed to work, teamed up with the Titan. While he's destroying the parasite, Titan is holding Speakerman so he can't interfere. But Plungerman was always eager to fight. He was impatient and fearless. That's what played a trick on him. Apparently he saw that things were not going as planned, and Titan Cameraman was busy with other things. So the Plunger Man decided to neutralize the parasite himself. As I said before, G-Toilet was not allowed to interfere this time, and the parasite was destroyed. By the way, the SEAT sign right there is just an air conditioning company. And no, that's not a reference to the air conditioning man, I hope. Judging by the blood on the parasite's head, TV Woman used blades. She probably destroyed him like TV Man did in episode 56 first hypnotized him, and then stabbed him with the knives. You can see the knives turning back into hands. By the way, there are a lot of connectors on the back of the speakers, but they are all unplugged. Also, the parasite is different from the one that infected the speakerman in episode 32. Maybe he's been improved along with Titan too. He now has six legs, while he had only four. Just like the parasite that tried to infect Titan Cameraman had six legs and was much bigger than the previous ones. By the way, even though the parasite is destroyed, it is still connected to Titan's body, which is why we see electrical discharges around him. This is why Titan still can't move on his own. Notice the parasite's cistern. It doesn't have a flush lever on it. That looks like something to flush, but it's not. It turns out that the Skibidi parasite can't be flushed, and that's why the Plunger Man was armed with plungers. But as we see on his own, he couldn't handle the infected Titan. Also note that TV Woman's jetpack works for her too. I don't think it can lift her into the air because it's too weak, but it can give her a soft landing. And then we see a very sad scene. TV Woman immediately flies to teleport the Plunger Man back to base. But there's a wounded simp cameraman lying next to her. She doesn't even look in his direction. If, in episode 54, we could tell she didn't hug him because she was teleported by the scientists from the base. This time, it was her choice. She had two guys in front of her that could have been saved, and she chose the Plunger Man. We see this lot in real life, too, where the famous girl doesn't even pay attention to the regular guys, despite their feelings and everything. Plunger Man is that perfect man that everyone admires, but no one can become the same. That being said, Dafuk shows us that none of this has given him any advantage. Instead, it has hindered him. Simp Cameraman was injured at the beginning of Part 1 right here when Titan Speakerman destroyed the anti-parasite jeep. Now he has no legs, and I think he'll be made a cyborg-like scientist. But it's possible he'll be given a regular wheelchair, since he's just a regular guy nobody cares about. Maybe the betrayal writing at the beginning of the first part meant exactly this act of TV Woman. I didn't see any other betrayal. TV men surprisingly help the Alliance again and betray no one. Perhaps next we will see who the inscription was about, but for now it only fits TV Woman's act. When Cameraman Titan disconnected the parasite and crushed it, the electrical discharges stopped and Speakerman's core glowed red again. If you notice, after he was infected, the core began to glow yellow. We can see how upset he is. From the look in his eyes, I realized that he saw everything that was going on around him when he was controlled by the parasite. He looked with great regret at the big speaker man he stomped his foot on in the first part. This incidentally was like a reference to episode 19, where cameraman Titan crushed Skibidi Toilet with his foot in the exact same way. I think Speakerman Titan realized what he did and really regrets it. He most likely flew back to the Speakerman to apologize for the whole thing and help them rebuild the agents. Also, I didn't notice, but there's a new improvement on his legs, something like an exoskeleton. At the very least, I'm glad the Skibidi spent the effort and improved Titan, and now he'll be fighting improved against them. At the end, we see Titan giving the thumbs up again after a long time. This means that the mission was a success. Helicopters with engineers are already flying in the background, which means the simp cameramen will be recovered, as well as the rest of the wounded agents. In general, it seems to me that in future episodes, the individual cameramen will be given a lot of attention. Whereas, before we looked at them as a faceless army, now Dafuk is singling out individual agents to us. Each of them has their own character and their own story. Don't forget this guy in the blue suit. He was acting very brave when he, along with the POV cameraman, started attacking the G-Man toilet. I think we will see him again in new episodes. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the analysis of new episodes. 
And that was me, Isa Toilet. See ya!